From the moment he first saw Sofia, Stanley knew she has to be in his next movie. She might only be 17, but her pure, youthful beauty enthralled him. But he's not a creep. He will be like a father figure for her. Being in a movie can be confusing and stressful, and Stanley will not only direct her, but also protect her. So after the filming ended, Sophia finds herself hiding in his apartment, not telling her parents where she is. Is Stanley really a sweet father figure for this victim, or is something else going on? In a book full of allegedly nice people, who is really our villain? Hey bookworms, welcome back to my channel and to another review. In this video I will talk about A Film with Sophia by Dutch author Herman Koch. This is the third book of Koch I've read and he does seem to have a certain style that you may or may not like. He writes about deviant people, not serial killers or mafia men, but your everyday assholes. Just one inappropriate comment from getting a restraining order. And in this novel as well, he plays with the idea of who the bad guy is here. Who are we rooting for? Are we being told a story from the point of view of a villain, or is he just your garden variety asshole who thinks he's really nice? Okay, so A Film with Sophia, my review. I read this book while on vacation at my parents' house. I found that book on a shelf and decided to read it, which took me about two days. And therefore, it wasn't a complete waste of time because I only read it on my downtime. I did not like A Film with Sophia. It felt like one of those cases where the author had an idea, a concept, and decided to create an entire book out of this concept, even though he really had enough material for about a paragraph. Let's start with the fact that about 85% of this book is inner monologue, as the protagonist mostly goes into stream of consciousness style tangents between bits and pieces of plot. The book opens with five whole pages about a man who doesn't want to go to a party he is invited to and what excuse is the most acceptable one. Five pages, just about that. Now, if you can handle a book that mostly takes place in the protagonist's head, you'll probably find it interesting psychologically. And if you don't like the style, you probably want to bash either the book or your head against the wall. I took a different approach and skimmed it a little, which is probably why it took me so little time to finish it. I usually don't skim books, especially when I want to review them, but I had to with this one to reserve some of my sanity. So we spend a book without a lot of plot in the head of a character. So who is this guy whose point of view we are immersed in? Well, a horny old man who would rather believe he isn't one. But he is. You know these characters, especially protagonists, whose author really wants you to think are something special, but they're not? Then this. Boy, what an arrogant douchebag. You do not know what pretentious is until you've met Stanley Forbes. Seriously, he gives me disgrace vibes. Sure that he's a nice guy when in fact he wants to sleep with all these young women he is so nice to. Look, I don't mind men flirting, older men with younger women, whatever, but not literally children. And stop pretending you're just being kind to her and her father figure. By the way, this is not a spoiler. It's not like we don't know about his true intentions until the end twist or something. That is simply what I got from his character. He really comes across from the beginning as a middle-aged man who wants to sleep with this 17-year-old girl and pretending he really cares about her without bothering to know anything about her personality. So you know what? Let's just conclude. This is a pretentious book that pretends to be so sophisticated. And yeah, sure, at the very end there's a little bit of a twist and a bit of a pun 
lunch, but the book wasn't worth it. To be honest, most of the book was just boring. Mean-spirited, pretentious ramblings of a pseudo-intellectual that thinks he knows more about life than anyone else. A lot like Koch's other protagonists, but this one with extra inner monologue, which kind of makes me wonder if Hermann Koch is the evil Virginia Woolf. The bottom line is that I felt that this book was a waste of time and was eventually completely pointless. And of course, if you read it and disagree with me, feel free to write so in the comment section. I love to hear your opinion and discuss it further with you. And that was my video, guys. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to like it, subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment in the comment section. Do you like books that mostly takes place in the protagonist's head? Again, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.